Hello everybody and welcome to the Carriageway E3 Cast 2016 edition follow-up roundup nonsense. I am the co-host Jacob Harris and joining me today is my brother Joe. As always. And uh, so we're just going to kind of run through the conferences and some of the stuff they announced and just share quick thoughts and uh, give them a grade. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. grade them on a traditional school grading system, F to A, yes. F my A. <laughs> anyway, so okay. uh, EA started. Uh, they didn't have an official E three spot. Instead, they were across the street, doing their their thing. They they said to the world, "Come watch us. Come see us. We're going to be doing something cool." Did they deliver? We'll go through some of the announcements. I think I'm missing. We're missing a few on here, and the order might not be right. This is just, but these are the big ones. Titanfall two. I I thought that was a a good showing of that game. They showed story. Yeah, they showed story. Uh, it looked pretty. Um, the single player looked like a big dumb Michael Bay action movie, which is probably. Yeah, that's probably what they want. Yeah, what what you'd want to go for with that kind of thing. Uh, I thought I thought it looked impressive for what it was. Yeah, I mean, coming to PS4 this time, you know, um, really not to our interest though. They had a Mass Effect Andromeda making of a oh, thing and... again. So like basically showing off little clips of footage with mostly just showing people working on their computers, working on like. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a Mass Effect Andromeda like announcement, or like it wasn't even a trailer for Mass Effect Andromeda. It was a trailer for the studio making Mass Effect, and it was EA has done it before in trailers, and it is. I am not a fan of that style of, of trailer. The thing that sort of shocks me is doing something like that. You you're giving the impression you have nothing to show. But, like, they actually did show quite a bit of Mass Effect. It's just, like, for, like, a couple seconds in between long parts of time just watching somebody working on it. Right. It makes me think that, like, they only have a handful of, like, really pretty cinematics or environments to, like, cut together a proper trailer. And they padded it out with studio shots of uh, programmers and artists working at their computers. But that game is supposed to be out next year. They're still saying early next year. We'll see. We will see. It, what they showed looked good, though. I, I liked it. I, I, I thought it. it looked good, too. Fee. This uh, is like their new indie-esque game. Sort of like a follow-up to last year's Unravel. Unravel like immediately looked more appealing than yes. Fee did. Fee, you know, I don't want to diss Fee. I'm sure those people are passionate about it, but it didn't seem original, like, the way Unravel felt original. Well, like, Unravel seemed like Little Big Planet, to be fair. That is, yeah. And it, Fee sort of, like... It seems more unique in its gameplay, but, you know, Fee, it does like, it look like a world I want to go exist in. Exactly, and it looks kind of cheap, uh, which uh, Unravel looked... It looked uh, high. It felt like it, it looked high end. Yeah, with that water tack and like it Just, looked great. Yeah, it, and yeah, it was a good looking game. Whereas Fee looked cheap. Um, sports. Oh, a lot God. of sports stuff. Really, a lot of sports stuff. Well, what was really bad about EA this year is that they uh, would have a proper announcement and then. Sports announcement, proper announcement, sports announcement. Yeah. Whereas before, they would have a sports section that took, like, 15 to 20 minutes of the conference. And, like, we could just tune out and, like, go take a leak or, like, go get something to eat. But you couldn't do that with this year's EA conference because, okay, there's something we cared about and then five minutes of sports. And you were afraid to leave because you might miss something good. That Like, they would sprinkle in good things between sports announce sports talk and that's for my for my perspective the kind of shitty not only 
like that they do that with their conference. They did something sort of unique that we haven't seen before. So they they also split their conference up between basic kind of like two different conferences, one in LA and one in Europe. I don't know in like London. In London. And like I guess it was unique. It wasn't terrible, but it also felt just kind of weird. I don't know. It, if like it wasn't as weird to a viewer at home. But I could imagine that being really bizarre to somebody who's actually there in that crowd. But I can't speak for that. Maybe it was uh, awesome. It, it, there didn't seem to be a good reason to even try it that way. And it just seemed weird because it seemed like they were trying to like create some sort of like Twitter thing about like like the left Twix, right Twix. Like, who won E3? Was it uh, Peter Moore in London or was it whoever <laughs> super... Super douche, super villain, Bond guy, <laughs> Bond villain, like. Well, actually, that's, and... that's funny you say that because Peter Moore is more Bond villainy than. Oh, okay. Than the other guy. I can't even Who... remember the other guy actually. Yeah. They... Oh no! Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I did. They, they both seem got... pretty douchey. They're probably both great people. So. Um... But continuing with sports. They actually showed something really interesting for a sports game, which was the FIFA, I think it's called The Journey, which is basically a story mode um, where it looks like a typical, I'd say, sports movie, um, where it's just like this kid who's kind of like, he's a- he's anxious and he's like really good at soccer and like his like whole, the world is against him, but like somehow he manages to be great at soccer, but at what cost and like stuff he, like he that. Like he comes up to the ranks. I thought that was, for yeah. the first time ever, like, oh, wow, I, it made me want to play a sports game. I mean, I'm still not going to buy it, but, like, that was interesting. I don't mean to be so down on it, because it is, like, that's a cool thing to do for your sports game, but, like, also, like, it's just not for me still. Like, I'm somebody who doesn't like sports, and I'm somebody that doesn't like sports movies, and I'm not somebody who likes that kind of story, really. But, like, it's never been closer to having me interested. It's yeah. still, it's still like, forever, you know, that's that's still a giant gulf that they need to cross, but, like, they've never been closer. Um, I just had just considered this just now. Suppose it was a Persona game where all of, the, like, the, you take out the dungeon crawling and you replace it with soccer matches. That'd be cool. Would that get you interested? Um, I think that would yeah. be so close. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Durr. But whereas um, this seemed Durr. like pretty scripted, like yeah, I, I, like they're playing a inspirational sports movie, like clips from an inspirational sports movie between your soccer matches. You know something that I think is worth mentioning about the announcement of this. It was super kind of weird because they had the actor who plays the main character come out on stage, and like they didn't really introduce who he was. And they just, like, he just kind of did this weird sort of theatrical speech thing. And, I mean, it seemed like he did a good job. It, it just was odd. Like, it felt like some guy from, like, who was out in the dumpsters out back happened to walk on stage and was, like, ranting in a hallucination. <laughs> yeah. And he seemed really passionate. But, like, on E3 stages, I'm, I'm sort of a, uh, accustomed to, like, developers or marketing people coming out and making those sorts of like making those sorts of um, speeches, and so I, I initially thought that he was like a like marketing or like an overpassionate developer. Well, what um, I thought was he must be like a famous soccer player or, or something, like sort of like how last year they brought out whatever Pele. Like Pele. So like, I, I I wasn't sure until like after it was over that's like oh wait I guess that's just like a theater student who's the main character or something. Well. I mean, I don't know enough about movies and actors. Like, maybe that guy's famous. Like, maybe. It was, he was supposed to be somebody you would recognize. Maybe. Maybe it was. He was from the Lifetime original movie. <laughs> Spank <laughs> Your Grandma. <laughs> uh. <laughs> A Santa Claus story. So they did something similar with Star Wars that they did with Mass Effect Andromeda. Sort of a making of footage of their every single Star Wars game spliced together with like interviews of the developers and stuff. It looked really cheesy and fake. Uh-huh. Uh, like it, it was a high production. It just looked soulless. The the thing that was the best part of that Star Wars montage though was a like 3 second clip yeah. of like <laughs> no, a guy but... walking through a street in Tatooine, which was Visceral's new uh, Star Wars game 
directed and, by Hennig, yeah. Amy Hennig, formerly of Naughty Dog. And <clears throat> that did look cool, but it was three, it was three seconds, seconds Yeah, yeah. It, I think, I'm pretty sure they ended with Battlefield 1. The, I remember that, yes. And it was just, they showed the single player trailer twice. <laughs> they showed the same trailer two times. I think that might have been an, an accident. I don't think they intended to do that. But they still did that. Uh, they didn't show any of the multiplayer stuff. All that multiplayer stuff came after the conference. Um, not that we care. Not that we care. The multi- I did watch some of the multiplayer stuff. It did look kind of cool. But ultimately, it's like, I'm glad some people are excited for it. The thing that just kind of bumps me out about Battlefield 1 is the tone of the game. Like, in the trailer that they showed here at EA, it was like there was a song playing and it's like about like, we're going to change the game, you know, like we're going to change the whatever. And it just felt like World War One wasn't this. World War One was like, you're in like a trench with your, your buddies, just like, well, not your buddies even, just you're in like a trench, miserable, like, well, nobody's doing anything. Dying of dysentery. And, you know, like, there's like, the get like gas is horrific. Gas isn't just like you're a dude running through like a battlefield throwing a gas bomb at somebody. No, yeah, it's mustard gas and then you die. It's yeah. Horribly. It seemed yeah, totally weird. But like I guess like capitalizing on any of these huge conflicts is really gross. Um, so what would you give EA as a grade? A D? It was mostly things I didn't care about, with, sprinkled with a few second clips of, like, oh my god, that's that's great. So, like, a stack of shit that's sprinkled with sprinkles? Um, or ch- chocolate or something? Like, But it's still, like, a stack of shit, and I don't want to put my mouth on it. I was so ready to give this an F, but I'm, like, after going through some of the stuff, I I just keep in my mind seeing that really passionate actor out on stage <laughs> and I just can't I feel bad about giving that guy an F and I feel bad that it's like some ways EA did like okay cool you're adding a cooler part to sports games that's or at least a FIFA that's cool you know like Battlefield 1 although I'm not interested and although I think tonally that game is off like that looks visually good and you know like we did see a little bit of Mass Effect and we got a tease of Hennig Star Wars and, and Titanfall 2 looked okay, you know, and they're continuing their sort of weird indie game thing. I feel, it feels wrong to give that an F. Yeah, but, and it, it, they're not, they're not bad, like worse than normal. No. Like, it, EA is always bad. Um, I think, just go, we had expectations of it being better. But, you know, they, they showed, however briefly... Like small segments of Mass Effect, and small segments of Star Wars, upcoming Star Wars games, like things I was legitimately excited about, just not nearly enough. So I wouldn't give them a failing grade. No, quite you're right. You're but right. it's it's I wouldn't begrudge somebody for giving them a failing grade. No, it was close. D minus. Yeah, D minus. What D minus? Because I want like when we move into Bethesda, I think Bethesda had a better conference. So it feels, not to spoil the my, my grade that I'm going to give Bethesda, but I don't want to give Bethesda the exact same grade as EA because I think it was better yeah. than EA. So let's move into Bethesda. They started with, actually we got we missed the first part of Bethesda. We jumped in at the last part of the Quake Champions uh, tease. Right. We were watching Game of Thrones and it ran a little bit late. So, but Quake Champions developed by id. Yeah. I think... Uh, that's what it said on NeoGAF. Okay. So it's basically, it sounds like it's just a hero shooter. A la Overwatch. Or Battleborn. Battleborn, yeah. You know, there really aren't enough of those games. Yeah, I want more. Yeah, there could the industry could easily sustain like 10 more of those. So clearly we don't care. Um, <laughs> and it, it's, 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 it's my just, sarcasm. It's kind of a shame, though, that it's... Like, they, they did so much with, not that we play them, but, like, I respect what they've done with Wolfenstein or Doom, and it seems like kind of a sh- shame that, like, they're not, I mean, I guess it's interesting that, like, they're taking a, a, a old series and they're they're doing sort of a similar treatment, but 
changing it up. Right. I think the, like, I remember distinctly when the Quake series was uh, important or existed. Like, it was never more beloved when, than when it was a, strictly a multiplayer game in Quake 3 uh, back in 2000 or 1999, I can't remember. Quake 3 was kind of the, the high watermark uh, for the series, and that was strictly multiplayer. So maybe maybe it is true to Quake and what people want. So um, what you want to term high watermark? Why are you whispering? Oh, Ask yeah. the world, Joe. <laughs> is it is it the high watermark? When I say it, it sounds nonsense. Correct us. Please. So Prey. Prey Reboot. Which is kind of weird because there was only ever a Prey 1 released and Prey 2 was in development hell and never released. Um, they showed a CG kind of... It wasn't great CG, so it kind of... It was a little bit misleading as they showed like first person with a gun. It wasn't great CG. It looked like a game that actually... It well, didn't look like better than, you know, Uncharted 4. I would say like it wasn't great CG. It's, it looked like it could be in game. Like we just, Jacob and I independently just got finished playing Uncharted 4. And like there was nothing in that trailer that like you couldn't see just running in the game on Uncharted 4. And like when we started, what we were watching the conference together. And I was like, oh yeah, this, yeah, this could totally be a game. And then like Jacob was like, no, like look, it's, it. Like the image quality, there's no uh, aliasing. That that is that is CG, and it's like, oh, well, that's disappointing. Like, yeah, show us the freaking game. You, may, I like you make me sound smarter. I because in reality, I was just like, no, that's not that's not that's CG, Joe. That's what I really sounded like. So uh, cool, I guess. Like tentatively excited, I guess. You know, like for whatever that is. I it looked neat. Um, it looked like a Bioshock like sort of thing, like yeah. a, like a thinking man's shooter or a woman's or a thinking person's shooter. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then, uh, the only reason this Bethesda list is more detailed is I just pulled it from NeoGAF. So apparently, there's free Doom updates. We'll be releasing regularly. Okay. Yeah, I don't care. Okay, whatever. Elder Scrolls Legend. Legends releasing on iOS, Android, Mac, PC. That's the card game. So I just real quick, and just to combine this with the MMO um, talk, it really bugs me as an Elder Scrolls fan how off those trailers are. I don't care that there's an, like whatever if there's an Elder Scrolls card game, whatever if there's an Elder Scrolls MMO. It's gen It's it's not Elder Scrolls universe. That doesn't look anything it's like Elder completely Scrolls. Completely generic Tolkien esque fantasy that you see in the MMO and in the card game, and it's really off putting because the the Elder Scrolls games, at least three, four, and five that I've played, like have a distinct identity that yeah. does not come through at all. And in... aesthetic and like way of of telling things and like in that freaking MMO trailer thing it didn't it show like riding wolves did it it was like riding some sort of wolves through anvil or something oh yeah that'd be that'd be crazy and then like in that legends trailer that card game trailer it's like there's like a guy sitting next to a fire and one of his eyes is milky and he's like got an owl on his shoulder and the owl's eye is glowing and it's like what what yeah? What is that? that have is not, anything to do with Elder Scrolls? That's not Elder Scrolls, but yeah. whatever. I think that's whatever. Three new Fallout Four DLCs coming. The biggest of which looks like Nuka World, which was like a theme park. Yeah. It's really it's kind of disappointing to me. Like before, I thought no way they're going to do any Fallout Four DLC stuff. It's it's just a little bit disappointing that it, it seemed like they were wrapping that stuff up before E E three. And yeah. now it seems like they're they're keeping it alive. I, I guess cool for the people that like that, but uh, they they did seem to be adding like more stuff to um, probably my favorite aspect of Fallout Four, which was like the town building mini game. <laughs> what would you call it? Like I a, don't know, just you know, oddly. And the thing is, I didn't go in expecting to like like that, but I s sort of just that's what I embraced because the rest of it kind of let me down. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, like, if... like I would play these if they were, like, free to me. But 
Like, I don't really feel like spending money on them. No, I, I don't either. Fallout Shelter. Nope. Um, Skyrim Special Edition. So, this is uh, basically Skyrim HD. And, as Joe likes to put it, what does it look like they have changed to it? <laughs> They've added the piss filter from Fallout 4. Meaning, just like, everything just looks kind of yellow that they showed. It, like, has that yellow look. Which fits a Fallout game that... You have, like, radioactive, like, waste hanging in the air. Skyrim, it, it looked weird. They, what they showed, it looks better than the original, but I don't feel ready. I don't want to put down money on this. Especially, like, 60 extra dollars for a 2011 game. That, and not... That know, isn't like, that much prettier. And also that I've already spent all the time I really want to spend with it. You know, there's, like, I could play through again, but... Ultimately, I've seen everything that game has to offer me. Uh, for for me, that it was a good announcement, but I will jump in at fifteen or twenty dollars. So Bethesda VR stuff. So they they just announced that they're going to be working on making Fallout Four and Doom work with VR, and I guess this new gaff thing says that it'd be releasing on Vive. So like a Vive exclusive. Uh, that that could be really cool it for Vive cool. owners. Yeah. yeah, but ultimately, like, we don't. Have, yeah, we, not the, we like, don't have a gaming PC, and neither of us have a Vive, and neither of us have money for either. So, oh yeah, um, probably not do that. But uh, Dishonored Two was probably their biggest thing of the show, and it just kind of looked like more Dishonored. Yeah, more uh, Dishonored. It did look prettier, but I think they needed to take the the next leap mechanically. Or to introduce, like, those mechanics in a completely open world. Like, not every game has to go open world, but the original Dishonored felt like it was supposed to be open world and wasn't. Uh, and it looks like it's still not, uh, which is disappointing. Still don't, still don't care. What would be your grade, Joe? Overall, I think I would give them a C. Whoa. Okay. It was... Bethesda seemed like a C, C student of E3. It seemed like they had aspirations for, to do better, uh, but they weren't better. <laughs> um, I'm going to give Bethesda a D. Uh, Bethesda, they got their homework, and I'm the teacher, and like I was pretty, like, they did a good job last year, and I was like, hey, you know what? Like, this is a pretty good student. They come to me this year, uh, and they, they hand in their homework, and it's like, uh, what what happened? This isn't very good. I mean, uh, it's better than nothing, but... No, I think it's apt, though. Like, last year, it was unconventional, and it it didn't work, but, like, you could see the promise, and they didn't deliver on the promise like, this year. Last year felt like, to me, like a... It's the prototype. This is like, okay, we're trying out this new thing. Now we build on that. This year, it felt like, you know what? No, we're just going to go and do a traditional conference. This didn't... This felt like a traditional conference, like an EA or an Ubisoft mm. kind of thing to me. Uh, yeah. And it was just like, not that that makes it bad. It it just, also, they didn't really have anything to show. It was better than EA. I think we can both agree. I don't know, though. Like, you know, EA had more things that I would be more likely to buy. But, like, it also, like, showed them for, like, seconds at a time in between long, boring, painfully boring sports stuff. I guess. But there's been pretty painfully boring stuff in here. Anyway, uh, let's move on to Microsoft. So Microsoft comes out, first thing they show, the Xbox One S, which is just the slim. So it's yeah. like smaller, sharper, their words. Uh, I And also it's supposed to be more, uh, slightly more powerful than the Xbox One base model. Uh, yeah, it, like it, it's an attractive looking box. Um, yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so then the first thing they showed was Gears 4. So very similar demo to last year, actually. Really slower paced, another storm, another stuff kind of falling apart. Yeah. They, they kind of, they showed like some of the protagonist and like his his companions kind of like quip, like with, share, like with quips. They were very quippy. Yeah, but the quips weren't like especially well written or no. acted. It seems like the like like a really dumb guy trying to act smart and like falling on his face. Uh, the 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 whole project, instead of like the really dumb guy just kind of being himself. 
Which is what you kind of want from a Gears of War, I think. Yeah, yeah. So can we say just quickly, like, how they end this? Just just to bring up, like, so then they announced Marcus Phoenix or whatever the... Yeah, yeah Mar- Marcus Phoenix at, at the very end. He's like, an old guy. He's like, ah, oh, welcome home. Or like, whatever. Like, that was supposed to be shocking. But Marcus Phoenix has been in every single one of those games. Like, that's, yeah. that, doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. Anyway... So, whatever. We haven't played any of the previous Gears games, but it's, so we're just really not interested. Yeah, we sort of just absorbed what those were about through cultural osmosis. So, um, they showed Forza Horizon 3. Kangaroo, good? Kangaroos. Yeah, like, the yeah. Australia is a great place for, like, an yeah. open world racing. Like, that is as good a place as you can expect to have a racing game. That's, yeah. like, you know, the varied environments, like... Yeah, that seems like a good fit. Yeah, I mean, it looked pretty. It looked good. Um, Recore. So we saw footage of Recore this time, not just the conceptual trailer. It looked kind of different than I pictured. I don't know exactly what I did picture, but it looked more action-y, I guess, than I thought it would be. Well, I mean, I think they wanted they wanted to be like a Metroid-style thing, which is it's weird, like, coming off of those designers that worked on Metroid Prime, I kind of assumed it would be a first-person game, but it's, you know, third-person action, exploring, puzzling. The, you know, it it didn't look like a AAA game, but, like, that nothing against it, but it, it looked like a smaller-budget game, but, like, it looked, it looked good, I thought. Like, yeah. They showed a demo of We Happy Few, Oh, that looked very cool. That that was a great... That... I remember when watching it with Joe, I said, this is going on too long. Right when they, they saw the piñata thing. But then, once they, start, they hit the piñata and you see it's a dead rat, I was like, no, that went on just long enough. Yeah, like, to build the tension. And, like, Jacob, like, hadn't seen any of the previous trailers for We Happy Few. And I was like... Like, it... it the very original trailer for We Happy Few like had me hooked. Like this looks super cool, Bioshocky kind of thing. It looks yeah, look really cool. Yeah, um, looks like really, really kind of sp- uh, spooky and creepy, in a way that, not in the way that like Silent Hill or oh yeah, Resident um, Evil is spooky and creepy in this. It has the veneer of like I I this idyllic, um, like uh, English. Uh, village, and it's from the other trailers. Oh, like, I don't okay. know. Like it's cobblestone streets, and it's like to me, like the sp- the scary thing about it, it's kind of in the way that like 1980, 1984 is scary. Um, as like this kind of, it's like this is what you know. This kind of you, this populace that is basically hypnotized or drugged into thinking this yeah. everything is pleasant and good when in reality it's not oh yeah 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 it's the dystopian dystopian um very cool props on those guys yeah it's super cool um they had a long thing about minecraft i'm not even quite sure what they were showing of it it was like they were announcing some sort of like cross play thing with you can play with people on their ipad or something yeah um and they had carmack uh john carmack formerly of id now of oculus out on stage being a huge dweeb yeah check out my roller coaster um and they announced like some sort of like new pack or something like dlc pack for like city environments or something you know it's it's it is is great that they continue to add to that yeah to that game um but i'm not sure that rates at e3 yeah i don't think anybody i don't think anybody watching e3 was like yes um so something that they showed that was leaked beforehand but oddly i'm like kind of excited for is dead rising 4 yeah it was a very cool trailer i love so like we haven't played the dead rising games i watched um the game Game Grumps play dead rising uh one and the and part of dead rising 2 and, like, was like, wow, you know, these games are actually pretty cool. And, like, I kind of had a respect for them. And, like, Dead Rising 4 comes out and it shows it. And it looks more Saints Row-y, kind of. By that, I mean more 
outrageous. Like, like you're driving form action. Yeah, you're driving this car with like flames coming out, and you put on like this Triceratops head, and you're breathing fire. But like, I think power fantasy is the right word for like yeah. that kind of thing. It was the the original uh, Dead Rising uh, was wasn't wasn't a power fantasy. No, in fact, you you moved incredibly slow. You were really vulnerable to yeah. Uh, whereas this seems to like revel in just like goofing around, which can also be cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it it looked cool, like the idea of a like a fun Christmas game. That's the thing that I love about it. Christmas. They're playing. Um, I can't remember the song actually. It's a Christmas song. Oh shit! Um, you're right. You like. <laughs> Like, I'm seeing the trailer in my mind, but I can't remember exactly I, what... It was a Christmas song that they were playing, and it felt incredibly festive. And watching it, like, I I really just wanted to have my hands on that controller, playing that game with the fire going right next to me, and it being snowy outside. Yeah, oh, yeah, that fireplace, looks... not just, like, burning things. Fireplace. And... Like that just looks so cozy to me. Like playing that, I want, I wanted that. I wanted to play that. Yeah. So let's move on to. They had State of Decay two. That looked good. Like much that, better than the original. Yeah, that actually looked. It surprised me how um, cool that was. It looks uh, like they're they're taking some cues from The Last of Us. In, yeah. In the way that that works, and as I think you should. Yeah. Uh, even though like it's this bigger multiplayer thing. Like pulling in those, the, those choices like, kind of makes it feel more grounded. So then they had a Battlefield One trailer, which was the same as the, <laughs> the this trailer that we saw twice at EA. So in, in total, it played three times during this during E3. the E three. So yeah. yeah, Microsoft played that same trailer. Well, actually, technically, as EA wasn't part of E three. Oh okay. So I guess we only saw it once at E three. And yeah. twice immediately before. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah. Oh, what, indie montage. What can you really say about that? About Field One, then nothing. Yeah, don't um, care. Yeah, they had an indie montage. It was a good montage. Uh, they showed um, uh, the people who made um, Lords of the Shadow. Castlevania Lords of the Shadow. Or no. Um... Mercury Steam. They uh, had Mercury Steam's new game, which is like... An Lords indie... of Shadow. Wait. Yeah. Mercury Steam's new game, which was like an indie montage. Which um, was featured in the indie montage. Yeah, Mercury yeah. Steam. Um, I didn't know what to think of it. Like, they introduced like a, uh, some things I, I wasn't familiar with, but I couldn't get like a really good grasp on what, what they were or what, the, what, what they were doing. I thought, it, yeah, I thought it was a, it was a good montage, though. And mm. look cut, look good. Yep. They also had uh, showed off inside, which is the crater of the craters of Limbo snoo game, and yeah, that looks they, great. They showed yeah that had its own trailer. right? Yeah, it had its own trailer. And like they didn't show any game like or they didn't show any like it being played. They were just like showing like environments for the game like that. Like that has such a good look. That game looks great. Yeah. So then they had Scalebound, which is Platinum's. Oh, Monster but, Hunter open world kind of role playing game thing. Yeah, maybe with the protagonist from DMC. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Everything they showed before of that game looked great. This this boss fight demo looked like garbage. Yeah, I hated this demo. This like before I had such high hopes that this would be like Dragon's Dogma or something like that. But they show this and it looks like this bad sort of really scripted boss fight that just didn't look fun and like the protagonist seemed really annoying still and like the annoying protagonist is fine but like like is it self-aware or not yeah like, like i can't do, tell like does is, kamiya really does kamiya realize that this protagonist is a douchebag or does kamiya think oh man this is this guy's really cool because I love Final Fantasy X. Or, like, and, whoever at Microsoft is Kamiya's handler for... Because, you know, I love Final Fantasy X, and Ty, but Titus is really annoying and stupid, kind of like that. But it's self-aware, and he has a great growth and character arc. Like Yeah, fantastic character arc, like, douchey kid to eventually hero. 
And, like, the Scalebound could have that same, a similar kind of arc. I don't know if it will, though. I, I kind of think that it. that's giving... Like, there's a lot to be said about Kamiya's career, but, like, great character arcs <laughs> maybe don't fit in 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 there. Okay, they showed Sea of Thieves. Um, kind of, I mean, it looked cool. People are very excited for this. I'm, like, I think it looks cool. I don't think it's, like, the best thing ever. I mean, it looks great. It, the water looks great. I would like to be existing in that world, but ultimately, like, we don't play online games. We don't really know people. Like, we don't have, like, friends to play with, so maybe but that's why. The thing is, I was thinking about that, but, you know, if, if you and I like, each independently had, like, an Xbox or a PC, and we're, again, both had a copy of this game, and we knew a couple more people who also had the, a similar set, and we were all playing together and existing on this, um, on this pirate ship, and then sailing, and, like, pirating. Yeah. Like, that sounds like the best multiplayer experience ever. Yeah, So I mean, for, like, people who who had that set up and had those, that, those friends and those connections... That sounds amazing. I but like playing with random people. I that sounds awful. Yeah. But if you had like a group of friends all playing that, that sounds like f- from my perspective the best po- best possible multiplayer experience you could ever have. Um. Okay. Yeah. So they ended uh, their conference with Project Scorpio, which we knew about beforehand, um, and they didn't show a box. Uh, and it was mostly Phil Spencer. He came out and he was like talking about it. It was really obvious, but he kind of he kept like is yeah, he beating around the bush. It's like, in fact, like when he was talking about it, like he got he, it's like you know what what did I keep saying to you? It's like, come on, Phil, pull the trigger. You know, it's like he was beating around the bush about how like you needed iterative hardware to continue, like innovating or whatever yeah. like, and he, he kept reiterating that same point again and again that's like fuck just say it uh and then like to my surprise is that he he sold it in a way that didn't seem super offensive no like there's two things i took away from that the first being wow like like i might not get this but like he sold like at least this like not Take away all the stuff that came after E3 with, like, Phil Spencer saying, like, D- w- don't waste your time on the Scorpio if you oh, don't have a 4K Well, TV. the mixed messages. Yeah, the, ignore, ignoring all the mixed messages, looking exclusively how they pitched it at this conference, it made it look like something that I might not buy, but I would be okay with existing. And right. that I wouldn't surprised feel, me. I wouldn't feel offended having bought, like, an Xbox One and then immediately this more powerful piece of hardware filling that spot. Like... I can imagine not being offended. Yeah, and I, they positioned that excellently. The second point to take away from it was maybe don't have Todd Howard in your montage pitching about how they need this. They're, yeah, they need the extra hardware for like the the probably the worst offender in terms of like poor programming and yeah, like, optimization. Like, um, Bethesda isn't particularly known for pushing the machines to its max who really just needs that extra horsepower, who just, like, craves that. Like, you yeah. want that extra horsepower so your games don't run, like, garbage because and you don't want to spend time to make them run well. Well, and what's, like, as far as I'm aware, like, Todd Howard was, the, like, the most high-profile pro- person in the montage uh-huh. explaining why Scorpio needs to exist. And, like, so he's the most... Like, can you imagine a developer worth their salt who would come out and say, it's like... Yeah, we fucking suck at this. We just need like much more powerful, powerful hardware to like muscle through <laughs> our completely incompetent programming. Yeah, I mean they even showed footage of Fallout Four, and it's like that's a glorified PS three three sixty game. Why are you saying that you need like that is your pitch for the Scorpio? Yeah, like yeah, Fallout Four like. <laughs> Like, if you looked at it, 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 at best, looks like a cross-gen game. Yeah. So, it was just like, okay, whatever. Anyway. Uh, great. I'm more positive on Microsoft. I would say they, they did, had a solid B. Wow. Okay. It's, like, weird because 
like, and I feel like after going through and talking about all these things, I want to, like, give every single one of these, like, a grade above from what I previously... I talked to me about. I talked to you about. Um, but somewhere, like, I'm going to give it a C+. Plus. It was, like, a competent conference. It was a well-put-together conference. I always think Microsoft excels at putting together yeah. a good conference. It was traditional. It was... You know, it had its low lulls, and but like lulls. it was well paced. Like it didn't, it didn't hang on too long to the to the, to to the shitty parts. Yeah. So you know, it was good. I don't think that Microsoft came and like brought like hit it out of the park. They didn't get a home run. They didn't show off anything that crazy. It was like you ultimately you made the Scorpio not sound like garbage, and Sea of Thieves looked all right. You know, instead oh. of it Decay 2 look all good, and Dead Rising 4 look good, but nothing was like, yes, yes, all right, here we go, you know? They also had that um, demo for uh, Final Fantasy XV and Tekken 7. That's true. I forgot about that. Uh, real quick about the Final Fantasy XV demo. Apparently that looked bad. I closed my eyes and looked away because I, I didn't I want also, to see. <laughs> I also closed my eyes because I for sure am going to buy that game. I don't want to see any more of that game, but apparently it looked bad. Tekken 7, like, look, okay. Yeah, as a story mode, like, that's that's what you'd want from a Tekken 7. And I'm a huge Tekken fan going back to the beginning of Tekken. Haven't bought the last couple. <laughs> no. But it seems like maybe it's approaching the right time to, to get back into Tekken. It, I, maybe? Just, I think it's just got to be more than a fighting game. You know, I think Street Fighter V proved that. You can't just release a base... Just versus just fighting. fighting, you can't just release a fighting game anymore. You know, it has to be something have something more. Yes, and I think going back to EA, clearly they can just release EA can just release sports games still. But I wonder if EA sees we can't just release FIFA again. Yeah, we have to do something new. I don't know. Maybe that's not true. Maybe they just like somebody just on a whim decided that'd be cool. I don't imagine EA giving a crap enough to like put that in there unless they felt like they had to yeah well anyway uh let's move on to ubisoft um so they started off with just dance 2017 uh it was also announced that that was coming to nx that's kind of interesting uh something the next thing they showed though after talking about that was tom clancy's (laughs) ghost recon wildlands and i don't remember i think it was like writing on games guy on his review on his uh, talking about E3 2016. Uh, Seamus Blackley. Yeah, he said it really well when, like, talking about, it's like, you have, like, these dude bros acting like they're, like, per- like pretending that they're, like, playing this game. Because the entire demo of that, you have, like, the people on, like, the fake, um, well, it's not, I don't know, the, they're, like, on the voice chat, and they're talking about, like, they're acting like they're in the game or something. Yeah, actors like, pretending to, yeah. to play the game over voice chat. Like and they're reading off of a script, it sounds like, because... No, I'm sure they are. Like, and Because they're like... Uh, and that's Ubisoft's like uh, uh, MO, is to like present multiplayer games, but having... Like this weird scripted that, dialogue. Yeah, it's really weird and off-putting. But like whatever. robotic and sterile. Looked okay. Like, I was kind of hopeful. I was like, maybe this could be like Metal Gear Solid 5. Like, is it stealth? And it was like instantly, nope. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So then South Park, the fractured butthole. um, They had a a lot, like, they had a lot of like demos and trailers and they like brought Trey Parker and Matt Stone out on stage and just like talked to them for a while. I felt like it went on too long. People seem to really like that part. Well, Um, people like those, like, I like those guys. I, I have my problems with their kind of the way they think is very limited but like they they seem like funny they, dudes they're like, funny but like ultimately it was like okay let's let's move on you know like they showed like the tutorial of the south park game and it's like oh, okay that's i i get it it's funny okay i know what the south park game's like okay but they just like kept showing more like the creating your character and stuff and it's like for me, it's like, that's cool, but I don't want to see that on stage right now. Exactly. Or there was probably a much more concise way of conveying that information. Yeah. Um, and that releases December 6th. And they also, I guess, announced that the um, Stick of Truth, when you purchase the Fractured Butthole, the Stick of Truth, you get the Stick of Truth for free. Yeah. 
So then they showed uh, Tom Clancy's The Division DLC, whatever. Nope. Um, Here. They showed Eagle Flight VR. Oh, yeah. That okay. was bad. Do you remember when they first showed that off at uh, PSX in December? It looked like a like a cool art game, like Journey or Flower. Oh. Um, what they showed off now was a multiplayer shooting dogfight game. With... So like with these eagles flying through these beautiful pristine environments and then shooting bullets <laughs> out of their mouths and it is the had turned me off completely that, from something that looked like oh my god I bet that's like this transcendent experience yeah, to you like put on being, the VR and you're just flying over Paris yeah but it's no. like the stupidest ka, ka, ka. <laughs> the stupidest shit you've ever seen it's like, like it's like that it's a joke it it is a joke it is embarrassing. Um, I want to just play through Ubisoft so we can get to Sony, uh, but they showed, um, Star Trek Bridge Crew, which is a VR game. It looked like garbage, but it's a cool idea. Oh, yeah. Like, as a long, super long time Star Trek fan, that is the dream. Uh, the graphics were rough. I don't know how it plays. Yeah. And, so... it, like, how you could possibly know enough people with VR headsets to make that work. Yeah. So then, For Honor, uh, they showed a story campaign. Like, I mean, people love that game. The people who play that love that. Like, I feel like that must be something that you just have to play, like, to understand. It, it, it has, a, like, a great look. I bet it, I bet it could be very cool. And, like, the, yeah. like, as I was actually even quasi-interested when it was just a multiplayer game, but, like, having, like, a super involved like single player story mode campaign thing has has made me like huh maybe yeah. I'll, I'll I'll give that a look I think Ubisoft would be very smart if they put up a demo for for honor or beta or something for people not because like really, who are on the fence yeah because people yeah. who really the only people that have played that have been mostly the game's press and like they rave about it but like for me it's like like I'm not just going to take you know, you, some yeah. person's word on it. Like the game press, the games press also like raved about Evolve. Yeah, like, so last or a couple of years ago, and it's like mm, <laughs> me, me. Yeah. I like the creative director of that For Honor game. Oh, I like that they. I like that they bring him out because he seems Dear, like somebody. Yeah, the, he seems like somebody who's just a nerd who played D and D, probably got picked on in school, and it's like he's. He's crawled his way up, and he's like finally on the stage. He's got the spotlight, and people are loving his game. And like his entire life, he's like, "I love Vikings, and I love samurai, and I love knights, and let's, I want to put those together." And he's I finally got a budget a bunch to do of that. Samurai swords up on his wall at home. That's cool, though. I like that. <laughs> anyway, they showed Grow Up, sequel to Grow Home, whatever. It seems weird. It's like to me, it's like do something new. Like that looks like uh, looks like a DLC for Grow Home, but exactly. It seemed a little closer to the source than <laughs> probably they should have gone. Yeah. Uh, Trials of the Blood Dragon. Which, oh, that was neat. That was cool. So it's a Trials Fusion, I think is what it's called. The Yeah. Like, like the, the side-scrolling the motorcycle game. Stunt you, game. Stunt yeah. game that you can create levels for. Meets Blood Dragon, uh, which was the Far, Far Cry 3 DLC. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that is a cool crossover. Yeah, it looked good. Um, Assassin's Creed movie, don't care, that looks stupid. It does, it, God, that looks, it looks fucking, t- like, like Hitman, or like all, Max Payne, or all these other video game movies, or even the Mario Brothers movie, like, all terrible. M- Assassin's Creed might be the worst. Yeah. It might be the worst ever. It looks so stupid. It looks terrible. Um, Watch Dogs 2. Watch Dogs. Um, <laughs> the creative director on that is also cool. Uh, so, San Francisco, like, it looked pretty. It looked good. Like, yeah, ultimately, it, though, like, I don't... Like, every, like you play one Ubisoft open world game, you play them all. Um, like, it's yeah. prob- it's going to have, like, you climb the tower. It opens up the section of the map. It has... Then opening up like three of this type of mission two of this type of mission and one of this type of mission it just and like with like five thousand collectibles uh, filling every single inch of the screen yeah but i do like this the scenery like them changing it up like san francisco it's it, it looks it looks neat like a neat place to just run around but like the game itself 
like I, I still don't care about playing an open world Ubisoft game unless of course it was a tie-in with uh, that platinum game Vanquish where San Francisco is blown up in the first like first part of that <laughs> yeah like it's it's a precursor to Vanquish yeah that'd be cool. and then everything blows up uh, so then Ubisoft then ended with Steep Steep is a like an open world sports game. snowboarding skiing skydiving game it looks pretty i like the idea of like you you're making the lines in the snow so people can follow it's kind of like this kind of cool idea uh Looks cool. yeah and like they're not being a snowboarding like because snowboarding games used to be that used to be a genre uh-huh. i can't think of the last fucking snowboarding game i guess it was the ssx reboot and that was a while and that like was like oh my god what is this it's I'm glad that there's that exists again for the people who like it. Yeah. I I've never really cared, but like I'm glad that if if there was an element that was, um, uh, this would just make every game better. I think Persona Four Social Links, where you're just hanging out in the ski lodge, hanging out with people, building your social links, and um, maybe dating sim. Chie is my waifu. <laughs> All right, uh, let's. So I, yeah, you want to do a quick? I I agree with Jacob. Adding Persona. F- Persona 4 style social links to everything would immediately make it better. Um, great. Oh, for Ubisoft? Yeah. Uh, C. I'm going to give it a um, D plus. Okay. I don't like getting into the nitty gritty of D minus D, D plus because... Well, that's why it, we're here. It, it, yeah, you know, to me it's just like, it felt it was a better... I, I, it was super... It had so so many... Points was just like, I'm just checked out. Just move on, please. It did go too long. Um, it was it was two hours, and it, that that should have been like one hour. <laughs> one. It would have felt long at one hour. Um, with yeah. So, but ultimately, they showed better things than like Bethesda, you know, and like better than EA, and it was, but like I. And you know what? It's it's a C. It's it's a good average press conference. Yeah, it and, had flaws, but it could have been a lot better. I think it looked worse in comparison, to, like coming right after Microsoft. Yeah, uh, Microsoft being much slicker in the presentation, and Ubisoft felt like it was wasting your time. Um, but there was some good stuff in there. I thought it was a C. Yeah, yeah. So Sony. Um, Starting off, they uh, it's really classy. It's oh, the stage oh, is sure. classy. It's and then awesome. a magician comes out. Yeah, e- evil magician. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with uh, the final countdown song playing, and he's dancing around stage, shooting glitter out of his wrists. I got the impression that that was actually a famous Hollywood. Apparently, he was. Oh, he is. He he is. Yeah. So he he. Like, Jacob and I, like, we're watching this this guy who looks like a magician walk out, and, like, the camera's following him, and we're like, um, who the fuck is this guy? He's about to blow up everything. Yeah, he, he's gonna freeze himself in a block of ice. Um, so, like, and then he starts swinging his arms around, and, like, this orchestra starts playing, and, and they're, like, playing this music, and it's this uh, chanting, and, like, it's super cool. It's obvious. For, like, six it's ob- minutes. It's obvious that it's got a four, um, right, yeah, it, music. Yeah. Well, yeah, is that we had got we would heard the leak that the new God of War had like took Was, takes place in Norse Norse mythology, yeah, and this had that that kind of vibe, and we're like, okay, I bet they're playing into a God of War trailer or demo, yeah, um, but just like, good music. That's just such an interesting way to start a conference. You're starting it off, sl- you're playing the entire. Track. Track. Before you even start anything. It's super classy. It looks like the Golden Globes. Um, and uh, there's like this girl on like this drum thing. And she's going like... Yeah, and it's like... Yeah, that was great. She's getting me. Like the thing is, it's like like, uh, like goosebumps. Borderline aroused. Whoa. (laughs) To quote Solo Travel Blog. Um, so it goes straight into, after that, the new God of War trailer, not God of War 4. Or it's a demo. 
No, a trailer. Yeah, trailer. Oh yeah, demo. So yeah, because got, uh, Corey Barlog was playing live, it live. live demo live by demo. Corey Bar- Bar- uh, Barlog, the game's director. Right. At the entire time during the entire conference, this orchestra orchestra is playing to like every demo, every trailer. And yeah. not maybe not every trailer, not every. Almost game. every trailer. The only exception I can think of is the Final Fantasy fifteen one, which right. had like that weird dubstep. Yes. Um. So, but the God of War, let's just quickly talk about God of War. Instantly, very different. It starts off, so you see his kid, and then you hear Kratos' voice, and just that build-up. I love that build-up. It's kind of taking, like, the... So uh, look Kratos, at, the, the main character of God of yeah, War. Yeah, Kratos, the main character. Famous douche. Um, and I just want to take a moment to appreciate this. Like, maybe we could do, like, a video later on. Like, I could, like, write something up and, like, do an in, in-depth analysis of this. Is like... Comparing how Gears Four was shown and compare, comparing that to God of War and that the introduction of Marcus Phoenix versus the introduction of Kratos. So, like Joe earlier said, like we all knew Marcus Phoenix was going to be in it. He's been in every previous one. You know, with this, it's like we knew from the leak, like Kratos was going to be in this one, but that reveal was it, so good. Like it, it felt like a like it really. Like punched you, and this is a character I like. Like I fucking you hate do, yeah, Kratos. Yeah. I Kratos is like he's the a d- fucking worst. He's a dumb. He's a bad character. I think dumb character in God of War one through three and maybe spinoffs. Um, and he's just like not well written. He's dumb. He, he's unlikable. There's no redeeming qualities about him. Right. And this trailer comes and it shows you a reason to care. It is it is very strange. That, I did not expect to give a crap about God of War. And the introduction to the gameplay, the camera sits behind Kratos' shoulder. La- last it, of a style. Last of a style. And this and the first thing he do, the Cory Barlow does while playing is move the camera around, instantly showing this is different than the previous God of War games. Yeah, with the fixed camera. Uh pr- previously fixed camera, now movable camera. Yes. Um and then you're just like walking. You're just going through and you're hunting a deer. And it, it's incredibly... It actually is very emotional. Um, to the point where like when, they, when they're when they killing the deer... Um, like, yeah, like I Kratos felt like, and his son go hunting. And yeah, the, the son fells a deer. And is, it, like, it puts it out of its misery. It's like super emotional. Very. And it was like... The difference of the previous... God, every previous God of War were... The trailers would show, like, how um, unimportant death is, I guess. Oh, yeah, uh, like, yeah. You're th- killing tons of things. This and was, death means nothing. It, this is, it, like, the first time in a God of War game they made a death matter. It showed the, like, you are taking this creature's life away. Yeah. And that was very cool. Um, just got a war, no four. Um, what I think was interesting, I, and I don't know if I've talked to you about this before, but... It seemed like, okay, Corey Barlog, who's been away from Santa Monica for the Santa Monica Studios that makes that for a while, like he directed God of War 2 and then left, that he came back to do this game. It seems like he's specifically picked like three of the like biggest games of the last generation and then melded them together, being The Last of Us, Skyrim, and um, Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. So like the, the three most like critically acclaimed games and then combine them into a single game for the yeah. God of War sequel. It's like I thought that was interesting. It I it was a very good uh It was deal. a very good de- I if you asked me before if I would like care about a God of War game, there's there's no way. But they've made it happen. It's I'm very surprised. I think God of War was the most surprising thing that came out of all of E three for me. Yeah. Um, Not that fact, it exists. The it fact just, that I care. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. Um, Days Gone. So also something that we knew about beforehand. It was previously called Dead Don't Ride. We or talked about it. It was in, leaked to be. That was its leak name. It was leaked to be called Dead Don't Ride. Um, we talked about it in the uh, pre, our predictions podcast. Yeah. Uh, and like, I was really down on it in that predictions podcast. Uh, because, like, Shinobi uh, uh, from, from NeoGAF, Neo like, freaking, like, that dude was doing that game a disservice with that, like, poem that he wrote, acting like this was going to be, like, some sort of 
like, like fun. fun apocalypse where we're just riding around on our bikes and we're bashing in skulls. No, this is full on Last of Us open world, basically. That, in fact, I think that's the elevator pitch. It's like if you took The Last of Us and set it in an open world with motorcycles, it would be days gone. Uh, yeah. Well, and it's sort of like me, it's World War Z. Uh, yeah. With, like, thousands of zombies piling up over each other. Yeah. Um, it, Joe it, and I even, like, Joe was like, like, <laughs> they're going to show a clicker. This is Yeah, before be... we even saw, like, any of the zombies, it's like, I wonder if this, if, like, the big reveal is that it, this takes place in the Last of Us universe. And it could easily have done so, I think. It could have. The tone matches that perfectly. Um... Joe and I almost even speculated, and this is just a speculation or a theory, but, like, Sony Band, like, you know, they made, like, Uncharted Gold in the Abyss, and, like, we almost wondered if they got, like, put in charge of, like, a Last of Us spinoff, and then at some point they were like, no, can we just make this our own thing? And then they just kind of maybe yeah. branched off onto their um, um, Days Gone thing. Yeah. Um, I was impressed. Very, okay, and, like, also emotional. Like... But the, I guess we're combining the, the trailer with the demo that we saw later. Okay, yeah. So how they split this up is they Days Gone was like the second thing they showed, but then also was the last thing of the show. Which with, was with like a yeah, demo. I, yeah, the yeah. live demo. Um, so really emotional start. Uh, because And then it goes into The Last Guardian. Release date. That's all that game needed. October 25th. Beat, like, in my bingo card, I said December, and that was me being super hopeful that that game even comes out this year. I'm super, o- yeah, o- I'm very October glad is, I am, I don't know if it's a great, like, point in the year to release, but I'm very glad that game's coming out. This year. This year. Um, also very emotional. Uh, Horizon Demo. So, it was, we're calling, it's kind of like a quest demo. She... You don't see the town, but you see, like, she's leaving the town right as the demo starts. Yeah. And you go and you kill some robot dinos, and um, it's shown, like, talking to somebody with, like, a dialogue wheel. Yeah, it it, it cemented in my mind that that game is a Witcher 3-style game instead of just an open-world action game. And I was afraid that it was just an open-world action game, but I'm so glad that it's a a proper role-playing game. Yeah, me too. Um, that I'm, game looks great releasing next year I don't think it's going to be this February release date I think it'll be like delayed and delayed and delayed until like maybe May kind of like what they did with Uncharted 4 Just or like, The Last of Us or, or, like, yeah, it, it, it seems like Sony's Sony trend is like yeah. they announce a date and then they just like delay 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 by yeah. months um, so then they showed um, the kitchen right so like it starts out it's like the kitchen you know and it's kind of going through it and you know, it's like, ooh, like, this is like, it is PT 100%. This is like phone ringing. Uh, it's like, it, it, and then it kind of like... P- PT, the playable teaser for Silent Hills, which eventually got canceled. People know. Um, okay. So then, but like, this... the whole thing is so Silent Hill-esque from Man- that trailer. Mannequins, like, oh, yeah. house, like, cockroaches. And then it like... goes into, like, a trailer with this, like, cool song. That sounds like a, a, a song from a, silent, a proper Silent Hill game. And it was, like, the whole time, like, I was, like, saying to Jacob, oh, my God. Oh, my God, somebody's resurrected Silent Hills. Uh, and then the logo comes up with, with, a, a... with Roman numeral 7, which is then overlaid with Resident Evil. And it's like, oh my god. That is like the most, the coolest Resident Evil's ever looked. Yeah, and like, the, that's the thing. It's like Demo up now. Yes. Uh, and what's so great about that is that, like, with Silent Hills, is that you had two pillars of, like, the, the horror game genre. Like, you had Resident Evil and Silent Hill. And Resident Evil was, like, really schlocky, but mechanically competent. And you had Silent Hill, which was... This like brooding, dark, heavy, psychological horror, and like the kind of the yin and yang, uh, and then Konami collapse. There's no Silent Hill game. Well, it didn't collapse. It just well, it, shut down everything. But we get the idea. Let's yeah. So like, I'm so glad like those guys at Capcom in the Resident Evil team like picked up that fucking torch and just kept running. It's like fuck yeah, you go guys. And now, like, the two series are practically one. Yeah, that's that. it's really cool. It is cool. Um, and that supports VR. 
Um, uh, PSVRs exclusively, I think. Yeah, I think so, so. Like Sony probably gave them money to do that. Yeah. I don't know how good that would be. Um, yeah, I mean... Like, I like the idea. I just, you know, with PSVR, it'd probably... Anyway, so then they... I think this release date for PSVR was already announced, I think. I think October... It was, so it's October 13th. Anyway, they doubled down on that. And then they moved into their VR segment. Um, and it was actually a good VR... It was a good way to demonstrate VR. Um, I, I'm still not sold on it, even I'm after still... this thing. But, like, they made a good case for it. I they think. did. Um, so, like, the, the big things from it was um, Farpoint, which look very Mass Effect-esque, like this first-person Mass Effect thing. Yeah, as you're, like, walking through a desert planet with giant spider monsters. I thought it, I thought it looked cool. I mean, it would have to be more than just that. Yeah. Than what they showed. So I'm curious. Um, they showed Star Wars Battlefront X-Wing, uh, like, DLC, which the is... Only looks... game by Criterion in this E3. Yep. <laughs> Uh, that looked cool. If you're, um, yeah, they showed like teaser thing for Batman Arkham VR. Um, yeah, I'm curious if that's supposed to come out in October. That it they is legitimately didn't have anything to show. No, they they did because there was the the playable demo at E3 for really? the two what was demos. It? What was it? Um, Bossman talked about it on the, the, the yeah. F Y I, the the trailer itself didn't sh- literally no. showed nothing. It just uh, the cow. Apparently, like Batman's cow apparent- and. Uh, a great yeah. Mark Hamill voiceover. Um, apparently, it's uh, your one of the demos is you're in the Wayne Manor and it's you're exclusively standing still and like you play this piano to open up the entrance to the Bat Cave and you ride this elevator down and as you're going down you're putting on all these parts of the Bat suit and then you like basically like starting some sort of mission thing uh, and then the other demo I guess is like a detective thing. Where you're like going around a crime scene, looking at all these different parts, trying to solve some crime. Huh. It sounded cool. Um, yeah. Ish. They showed Final Fantasy XV Afrojack trailer, which was the dubstep trailer. It I closed my eyes for part of it. I had I had to watch some of it because it just looked too cool. Like it, it was I'm, a good trailer. I'm not a fan of dubstep, but I thought it was a good trailer. It was a good trailer. I I, lo- I think that game is going to be great. Uh, and then they ended that with um, Final Fantasy XV VR experience. Which look kind of dumb, but you well, play yeah. your prompto and you're just like standing still shooting. Prompto, your gun. who is like the the game is about like four bros on a road trip. Uh, prompto is the screw up friend that nobody <laughs> likes. Yeah. So you can put on the VR helmet and then play first per, first person from Prompto's perspective. The best part of that thing though look like just riding around in the car with Cindy. Yeah. Cindy is like the girl with like the very revealing coat. The, the mechanic who fixes your car. Yeah. So just like riding around like that sounded really cool. Yeah. Um, they had that. So this is something that interesting. They, they started off. They, it's a demo. Joe and I don't know what it is. It's very sci-fi. You're like starting this mission. You get in your like your your uh, your um, spacecraft thing. Your whatever and, and, X-Wing. And so you're, you're walking through this like uh, this space uh, hangar. Hangar and like you, you know, there's a lot of hustle and bustle. You get in your spacecraft and you, like it shoots you into space Very and you're pretty. dog fighting. Uh, and the thing, yeah, didn't know what the fuck it was uh, because we don't pay attention to Call of Duty news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it turns out to be Call of Duty, but like we're watching this, it's like, wow, am this I'm, is really cool. Like, like, and in the back of my, or like I even say this out loud, it's like, is this a Colony Wars reboot? And like Colony Wars being like an old. Sony property from PlayStation One days of like nerdy space battles and stuff. It's like, oh my god, they rebooted like well, Colony Wars well, and made it like a triple A. And I was thinking like, or I was thinking like, maybe this is Kill Zone or something like that. Like, because he gets out of his X wing and then he's got a grappling hook and he's like, like big gory, gory kind of killing people basically. Yeah, and like because it like floating in space, so like the only way to like move around in space is to grapple onto physical objects that are floating through space and yeah. to move yourself toward them. And it, like that looked really cool. And then it gets a little shooty shooter heavy, yeah, and really like, shooter kind of, heavy, and kind of tuned out. But like, even, like wow, it's like this looks really cool. What is it? Oh, it's the new Call of Duty. Like something like Jacob and I just. But like to be fit, like. When I watched it that first time, I was intrigued, and I feel bad that I have this bias that then when I went back to rewatch it, and knowing it was Call of Duty, I was like, this is lame. So I feel like 
this actually is really cool for Call of Duty that like I was intrigued, but I can't get over my Call of Duty bias of thinking it's stupid. Well, what's what's funny, and then they played the trailer for uh, the remake of Call of Duty Four. Yep. Uh, which is just like the most Call of Duty thing that ever Call of Duty, and it's like, yeah, this still looks lame, but the <laughs> other thing looked cool. Yeah. Um, they showed Lego Star Wars, um, which I guess is out in like a couple of weeks, demo, whatever. Um, Aye. So then, it's kind of interesting, Sean Layden comes walking out on stage with Crash Bandicoot Shadow bobbing up and down. Okay, like, and how they work, like, with this really complex, like, LED screens, yeah. like, on the floor of the stage to create, yeah. like, this fake shadow. It, it's cool. Super elaborate for a dumb... A dumb announcement. <laughs> um, but, like, it could... It was, like, okay, one, it puts all that crash crying to to rest. But two... That's like... like it, you, you know, it's like they... It, they actually announced that they're, like, working the crash one through three from the ground up. So, like, yeah, that so might actually be better than what it sound, initially sounds like. Um, um, but and they then, didn't show that. They didn't show it. They just said 2017. And then Crash Skylander... Um, <laughs> Which was like a joke previously. Looked, you know, like Skylanders. With Crash. With Crash. With an ugly fucking Crash Bandicoot model. Yeah. Um, but okay, so then the next thing I is, guess, like, that's not fair because they've all looked fucking hideous. Yeah. Um, they did, they're doing the best with what they're given. So it's kind of, the next thing is really cool. Andy House. Alfred. From, um... He, from Lucky Charms um, <laughs> Cereal Box. From uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment Europe? He, no, I think he's just like the president of Sony Computer Inter- Interactive Entertainment oh, now. Oh, no, it's not a computer. It's just Sony whatever. Interactive Entertainment. Okay, whatever. I think he's the president because, now. Yeah. He's the big shot of pre- PlayStation. Oh, really? I think so. Of the entire thing? I think of all oh. of PlayStation, he's the big shot. For some reason, I always thought that he was just the head of the Europe. I, that was his old job, I think. Oh. I think he got promoted. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what? You're right. I think I remember that. Um... So he comes out and he basically, you know, it's obvious. He's announcing Hideo Kojima. Curtains rise. Kojima, Kojima-san walks down the stairs with, like, a light bridge with the LED panels forming underneath him with each step. And, and yeah, as he, as he walks down the stage. And he comes down and he says, I'm back. And then he's like, I brought you a real-time, um, real-time trailer. A trailer for his new game. For my new game. And then that plays, and it is, I think, my favorite video game trailer of all time. Yeah, it's definitely up there. Like, it was super, super cool. Super, super artsy, super... Great. It was, it was great. I have no idea what that game is, but it, like, my mind is just going, like, yeah. turning, just trying to, like, what does that mean? If you want, like, to follow, like, theories and stuff, like, a good YouTube channel to do that is Young Yeah. Uh, Y-O-N-G-Y-E-A yeah. uh, he does theories and stuff on that so if you're interested follow him He's, he seems like a nice a gr- guy great trailer analysis uh, he hasn't done one yet but he does good trailer analysis I, I'm I, sure he, he will he has to be working on that yeah so that was cool it's called Death Stranding it, the name the name immediately sounds dumb but yeah. I don't know if it is dumb because there are certain yeah. things in, in like Metal Gear that sounded dumb and then turned out not to be dumb. Like the, for instance, like the um, vocal cord parasites sounded dumb. Oh, yeah, that was dumb. Vocal cord parasites and the hamburgers. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. uh, so then the next thing, it's Insomniac logo comes up. It's Spider-Man, PlayStation 4. Looks, looks really cool. Not a movie tie-in. Yeah, completely original Spider-Man game. Built for PS4 by Insomniac, who is one of our favorite studios. Yeah, uh, they become, for... they've uh, fallen a little bit in the past couple of years, but uh, still, I have faith. Uh, this looks like a fresh start for them. It looks really good. Looks really cool. Yeah, that was also high. Like that was like a one. I think the for me the one two punch of the the two highlights from Sony show. It's like Hideo Kojima on stage and miraculously having something show. Uh, even though that game has only been in development a couple months. And then Insomniac working on a Spider-Man game that looks super fucking cool. 
I got uh, I got to add one more. Uh, so three highlights. Um, okay. God of War. Oh, for sure. Like you know, in the Horizon demo and. No, uh, no, I don't want. I don't want to say Horizon demo because I want to say God of War. Ex- not Days Gone. Not Horizon. Uh, God of War shocked me so much with how how emotional it was. I I care about Kratos now. I care about that kid. I care about God of War. I I am incredibly surprised by that. Yeah. Yeah. So then they ended with a Days Gone demo. So and we talked about that already. So yeah, do you it, want to... the demo looked good. Supposedly, and I don't know if this is it had been disproven, but the the hullabaloo on NeoGAF is that a Red Dead sequel demo was supposed to be at the end of the Sony conference, but was pulled at the last minute. Because be- it was too of the, controversial. Well, for because that. of like it the, of the Orlando shooting. Yeah, which so. was probably a good idea if that was the case. Yeah, it would. I think it would, it would come off a little tone deaf. Yeah, but we got Days Gone, and that was cool. Also, something that kind of support that uh, that Days Gone was originally the end is if you look at the Days Gone trailer that they showed, the trailer ends with the main character Deacon standing with his motorcycle when which the is demo begins. when the demo begins so it so looks like, like it was originally meant to connect yes so like it seems like to be, have been artificially placed uh, um, in the conference but that's just a theory an E3 press conference theory um, so do you want to give it a grade? Uh, it was one of the very best press conferences that I've ever seen in my in my decades of following E3. So, for me, it's... It, yeah, it's an A or an A+. Plus. It, I don't think... The and I, the highs weren't as high as last year. No, I don't... Like, the but, highs last year were, like, so incredibly high. But it was a better press conference. Yes. It, it, I feel bad calling it a press conference. It was like... It was like this... It... it like transcended gaming into this art it's an art form you know yeah. it's this isn't your stupid we're bringing you were out of touch you know business men trying to this was like no this is this we, is our for show an, for an hour you were going to be entertained yeah and like I, the entire time i was entertained i was well with the exception. Skylanders and fucking Lego Star Wars, but you needed a breather, they, and you needed you needed those points. Like any good, like any good story, there's those lows, you know. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was exceptional. I, I want to just give props to uh, Sean Layden, uh, the president of Sony Computer, Sony Entertainment, uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment America. Actually, is he worldwide now? No, he's a, it's America. Oh, still. just America. I thought, wasn't he promoted to, like, some bigger thing? Maybe. I, thought I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, and he previously, like, I, seemed, he was so off-putting to me. He was like, this he doesn't He's technically the new guy. In this year, he found his stride. He, uh, like, he was more comfortable than ever. He kind of had, like, that, He, but he f- still felt kind of insecure, but it made him feel more, like, relatable. It, he was, he did a great job. I want to give... Mad props to that dude. Yeah. Um, like, I'm, I have much respect for him now. Like, respect that I didn't have for him before. Yeah. Um, so, let's move on to... Nintendo didn't have a conference, but they had a treehouse, which was just, like, a really long stream. They started off with, like, 40 minutes of Pokemon stuff. <laughs> oh, and Man, rough. that was brutal. Oh, my God. It's, like... And the thing is, it's, like, they weren't even, like, playing for a lot of... They were just, like, fucking bullshitting... Where, well, like, like on the, the fucking battle screen, like, not choosing an option, and they were just, like, talking. It was like, like watching a bad Let's Play. Like, yeah, a, was, unfunny, boring, uneducational Let's Play. Oh, oh, God. But then the big thing about the Treehouse was they showed Zelda. Yes. At first, um, I had a feeling, like, how people describe putting on Sony VR for the first time. People who put on VR for the first time, they say... It takes like two to three minutes to adjust it because at first it's like this looks like ga- garbage, um, but then you kind of get used to it and then you're really in it. Zelda was like that for me. I yeah. saw it and I was like, God, that looks so janky. 
it's like that feeling of like going back to because you're ultimately looking at like a ps3 360 level kind of game with the technology because the wii u is about that power level but you know like after you got used to it and saw wow this is really cool there's yeah, a lot that, to this that that game yeah like throwing everything in design wise and like like making it the, this like more more open more like interactive it's like it's open it, it is thing it's it feels like um like a sequel to zelda one that yes. never ever happened you know like yes. zelda 2 wasn't really like zelda one it, me- it mixed up the formula and linked to the past although it's evocative of zelda one it's a lot more structured and, like, and then yeah. ocarina of time followed that path in everyone's sense this felt like no we're going back you wake up and you just go yeah, and like it's you can climb on anything, and you're, yeah, you're cooking and like f- and farming resources, and it, and like, like equip equipment management, and like certain equipment you need to wear in snowy areas to make you warmer, and like yeah, and building fires, and like at night enemies get really tough, and yeah, so like they're taking like some of the best aspect from like like Monster Hunter and Dragon's Dogma and Shadow of the Colossus and, and Dark Souls and Dark Souls and Witcher 3 and... and like it's in any of those individual spaces it's not as strong but like all like melded together into like a single whole like that's super compelling yeah I'm I like I felt I, I felt angry with myself because I so didn't want to like seeing what I saw of Zelda but I, I really just felt that way because I was like, don't make me buy a Wii U. Or an Don't NX. make me buy an NX. And then, I, so I was like, even with me going in really hard on it, I felt like it still won me over. I was like, I texted, I was texting Joe and I was like, dude, this part of Zelda looks so cool. Dude, this part of Zelda looks so cool. Yeah, the the, the, seal, the shield snowboarding and the... Yeah, like, like it's just so cool. Anyway. Yeah, like, yeah, I am... Uh, and I told Jacob this before, because like you know, as a fan of like Xenoblade um, on yeah. the Wii, and like you know, I want to play the new one, but like you know, I'm I'm super strapped for cash, so I'm just waiting for that point and where the NX is announced and I can buy a Wii U for like under a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, and like catch up on all the software I've missed. But like you know, this you know this new Zelda and. Xenoblade X and um, Cross and um, the 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 Shin Megami Tensei Cross Cross Fire Emblem and like there's other things that you know I get but yeah anyway yeah it's like that seems like a system with some cool cool exclusives that I want I want to play eventually I'm just too scra- uh, strapped for cash to justify the purchase yeah um, I don't want to give Nintendo grades because. It they didn't have a conference, and like the tree, it seems weird to grade that treehouse because, well, yeah, like, the the Pokemon would drag it way the fuck down. Yeah, but, and like honestly, as cool as Zelda was, is that they showed way too fucking much of it. Like yes, like I got to, it was just like what do you, stop stop yeah. showing this stuff? No, just it's like, I want to do this thing. Like don't show me the thing. Yeah, that yeah. And, like, it wasn't I think, technically, like, a story spoiler, but, like, I want to discover this stuff myself. I think it would be um, smart of Nintendo, just really quick, to put that Zelda demo that they put, uh, they had at E3 on the uh, Wii U store for the people who bought a Wii U because, you know, just to kind of be like, hey, you know, like... Thanks for supporting th- us. Yeah, thank you for supporting us. Here. Even though, you know, yeah, they'd hit rock bottom. So let's just quickly go through our bingo cards and see what we got right and wrong. So they're uh, they're going to be up on screen. So let's I'll just go through mine really quick. Uh, I didn't get a bingo, obviously. Um, here I got the Kojima game title. No PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale two. Uh, no Jason Rubin at Microsoft. Uh, I got the no PlayStation Four K right. There was no Elder Scrolls Six. Dreams two point is just Dreams, not the case. Uh, Dreams that wasn't even there. Okay, they did technically show uh, like three seconds of a mechanic Star Wars. Uh, I'm I'm not even gonna count it. Okay, Ubisoft naval. No, or... no naval RPG. No six remake. No Shenmue trailer. I don't know about the ten minutes of 
Morpheus, I think they probably spent more time on it, especially if you count like Resident Evil 7. So, no. Nintendo and Microsoft, no. Um, Call of Duty at Sony, of course. Yeah. Um, Dead Don't Ride, or now called Days Gone, uh, did get more than a five-minute demo. So, yep. Uh, December, Last Guardian release. It's in October. Agent. No Agent. No Dragon Quest Builders on stage. No Suicone 6. No Crash by Mark Cerny. Horizon was delayed. Uh, the infamous Spider-Man was actually made by uh, Insomniac, so nope, I didn't get that one because I was implying it's made by Sucker Punch. Uh, no 40 Dark Game Heroes, no Sanzaru, no 10 spinoff, no Nintendo at Sony. Um, so no, no bingos. Yep. Okay. Um, I, however, started off that there, there was no new Suicoden, no Media Vision RPG. There was a Horizon Quest demo. Are you going to yeah, give it to me? I'll okay. give it to you. All right, got it. And then Kojima was there. Got that. There was no Dissidia. Uh, no Dragon Quest Eleven, No Level 5 game. You might have to put that down so that Mike can pick you up. Because oh, okay. Uh, no Mega Man Legends 3. The No NX footage of the new Zelda game. Scorpio Scorpio was six teraflops. They, they said they, it twice, Phil Spencer and... One of the people in the montage said that. Yep. Uh, Rockstar didn't show up. Although they might they might have. Uh, Persona 5 did have a release date, but that, but was, that, that was before E3. I'll still get but it But it was you. after we recorded the podcast. Yeah. So, like... Well, I, but, you like, Horizon was delayed um, yeah. after the podcast, but before E3. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So... So, I'll give it to you. I'll okay. give it to you. Uh, Call of Duty, of course. Uh, no Deep Down. Horizon 2017, got it. Um, Adam Boyce did not say Dreams 2.0. In fact, he wasn't even on stage. No. PS4K did not show up, got that. There was no Child of Light 2. There was no F- Final Fantasy 7 trailer. And, and No Ares footage. No Ares footage. Uh, the Skyrim VR one was interesting because they announced Fallout 4 VR. And it's like, God damn, it's so close. <laughs> yeah. No Dragon's Dogma 2. There was a Detroit... Uh, it wasn't a demo. Oh, fuck. It was a trailer. You're right. You're right. So that doesn't count. Crash Bandicoot? Yeah, I guess I'll give you the Crash Bandicoot thing because he was there, but I, I don't like how you did that because you should have you strengthened that Batman. Okay. Well, it, was, it wasn't a for sure. <laughs> uh, no From Software and no CyberConnect 2 role-playing game. I got... More than Jacob, but no, well, nowhere close. That's to what because being out. that's because um, Joe, just because Joe didn't um, make very risky bets. Uh, the, uh, some of them were pretty risky. Yeah, I guess. So anyway, um, I guess Joe won e three. That's who really won e three. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> alert the presses. Yep. That better be a NeoGaf thread tomorrow morning. Uh, so I think you know I think it's... Uh, actually I didn't lose as hard at E3 Bingo as you did yeah but like that's uh, I'm the biggest loser I congratulate that you took bigger chances on your bingo card so I think all in all like just as wrap up E3 I think in some ways it was a disappointing E3 for me some of the things that I really wanted to be there weren't there, but it was an incredibly solid E3. I think there was none of the press conferences that were really below their average. Even EA, like I think, did a better job than last year. Ubisoft, I think, did a pretty good job. Bethesda yeah. did an okay job. You, you know, like Microsoft did a competent job. Sony, but and Sony did a great job. It's just it's hard not to compare it to last year. Um, last year felt so good. Uh, this year, uh, I think the takeaway was I'm excited about God of War, which I never thought I'd say. Kojima's awesome. And Spider-Man looks cool. Yeah, I... I... And Days Gone was a cool announcement. Some people, I'm not going to call anybody out, some people were saying that Days Gone was stupid. And those, I don't agree. Days Gone was cool. You go, Sony Band. You go. <laughs> your thoughts. Your your impressions, Joe. What is your takeaway? Yeah, super solid. I'm 
yeah, great, great. Uh, Sony did great. The rest of them were just hanging in there, um, pretty much. Uh, but Sony did really well. I'm a little disappointed that there weren't more Japanese games at Sony stage. Because sort of that made last year's conference. The, the, you know, I like the idea of Japan coming back and becoming a force in, uh, like, big budget games. Uh, and they, they still are. Um, but, like, I like to see that kind of stuff. And, like, some of my favorite developers and franchises weren't present. But, like, they made us... Like, that was a really strong conference. And the rest of them... I, you know, Sony, though, you know, like, showing off Death Stranding and Last Guardian and uh, Final Fantasy XV. You know what? I guess you're right. Um, you know, I don't mean to cut you off like that, but, you know, I think the, what I'm, sort of about this E3, they showed really nothing that I really, really wanted to see. Yes. But it kind of surprised me how much like, how good those things that I didn't really care about or think I was going to care about were. You know, yeah, like, like Detroit even being a good example of that. We didn't talk about Detroit. Oh, how did we not? Um, I guess it got didn't get on the list. Uh, uh, yeah, Detroit looked cool. Um, and that's the thing. Like, like if you told me before uh, E3 that I would the the games I'd care about most from the like, uh, from E3 announcements would be a Spider-Man game and a God of War and, you know, something Sony Band made. And, and like, Detroit. And, like, uh, these things that, like, I knew about or, like, played their games or, like, but I, I, like, man, I'd say you were freaking crazy because, like, I had no attachment to any of those things and now I do. Um, so, you know, like, I think it's hard to end something like this because, like, kind of putting the clothes on E3 of 2016, um, for us, you know, like, I know it's, like, kind of been over for a while, but, like, to us, this is kind of the end, uh, so, but I think it's just, I think it's time to end it and, um, wrap it up. So, thanks, everybody, for, uh, listening, and, um, be sure to correct us on anything we got wrong. And uh, hopefully we'll do, we'll come back and do some other podcasts and stuff. Yeah. In the future. It was fun. Got some more stuff in the works. Yes. All right. See you guys. Button your face. No. Let that die. <laughs> Oi.